gospel, light up the tempo. Saw a swing, kill a lot from the ghetto. The hood messenger, let them know hell's close. Black burial, oh, the devil in a black cloak. Yo, what is up? Welcome to the Street Gospel Podcast. I'm your host, Dave One. And this is bonus episode, another bonus episode. So if you know about our bonus episodes, they're usually for somebody that's famous. They're usually for somebody that can't make it into the studio. Maybe they're out of state. Um, so we got a special guest today. But before we get to the special guest, I got a few quick things I wanted to announce. Uh, if you didn't catch the last episode, we had a great last episode with uh, Zach Dean, uh, a good brother. He's come a long way, man. Uh, a great story of overcoming. Uh, just a positive dude that, that has a new leaf on life. So if you didn't catch that episode, catch the last episode of the Street Gospel Podcast. Um, that is definitely a great, great podcast. Um, second, uh, if you haven't followed already Hope and Promises, make sure you go and follow Hope and Promises on Instagram. Uh, and check them out at www.hopeandpromises.com. So this is an organization that I truly believe in. Uh, they're out there. They're helping people that have the basic needs, you know, clothing, food, uh, uh, medical needs, uh, medical supplies. Um, they are usually an outreach program that goes out and they will supply these things to people that either are a man-made disaster, a natural disaster, and they're sharing the love of God with these people. So please follow them, check them out, hope and promises. Secondly, I want to invite anybody to check out, if you're in the Southern California area, Orange County specifically, but you can drive from whatever county and check them out, please check out Elevate Ministries. They're in the city of Orange, California, a very, very good church, uh, good people. They love God. They love people. Uh, I want to welcome anybody to go and check out this church, an awesome church. I'm not just saying that because I go there, but to be honest, it's a legit place to serve God, uh, bring your family, uh, get involved. If you're a young person, if you're a single person, if you're a family person, if you're into skating, if you're into graffiti, if you're into uh, audio, visual, praise and worship, the word, um, serving in the church, whatever it may be. I mean, it's a solid, solid church. So please check out Elevate Ministries on the gram at Elevate Ministries and online at www.elevateministries.com. Don't even forget that. So, uh, well, we're going to get down to the business here. And, you know, I always like to play a little banger when I introduce my, uh, my guests. And, um, you know, this dude right here, you know, I got to put on a little bit of East Coast. You know, a little East Coast beat. This guy right here is a, first of all, he's a brother in the Lord. That's number one. This guy's a solid dude. Uh, secondly, this guy is a, a writer. And if you know what a writer is, that's like a term that graffiti guys use. If you're a writer, you do graffiti. I'm a writer. You're a writer. Okay, graffiti. That's what it's all about. He's a writer. He's an MC. So he's, he does it all. He's a New York native. Brooklyn, I mean, this guy's the real deal, uh, and I and I, I've known him for a few years. We'll kind of get into how we met, but I want to welcome to the show the one and only Spain Nunez. Yo, what is up, my brother? God bless you, my brother. Everything good. Everything <laughs> good. Be to God, man. Man, so we we were having a little bit of technical difficulties. We're trying to get you get you on here, but we we figured it out. We we made. We made this happen. You said a little prayer, and uh, you know, the Lord upstairs uh, blessed it, and uh, He put it kind of put it together for us. So we're finally here, bro. So how you been, man? Good, good. You know, just hanging in there. I'm saying, um, throughout any circumstances I go through in this lifetime, I just always be thankful to God, man, and just stay focused. I mean, that's it, brother. That's it. So, okay, so we met. I think it's going on like seven, eight years ago. It's been a, it's been a while, bro. It's been a while. So, the funniest thing we met because I, I have a brand, Savior Brand. Uh, for everybody that don't know out there, I don't really advertise it too much, but uh, Savior Brand, and I would put up stickers and I would put up, you know, wheat paste and kind of was in the realm of tattooing and uh, graffiti and just all that. And then I seen, um, I seen you, bro. 
and you write, Jesus saves. And we kind of made the connection. So we made the connection because of the gram, because of, you know, online connection there, right? Social media. And since MySpace days. <laughs> yes, it's the MySpace. So it's been longer than, it's probably been like 10 years, maybe. It's been a, it's been yeah, a about, Yeah, about, about probably like 10 years, I believe. <sighs> At least, yeah. right? And so. I, I believe so. Yeah, 10 years, I think so. So we, we the, the crazy thing is this. So in. In 24, I think it was 20, I want to say 2014, me and the fam took a trip to New York. I don't know if you remember this. Oh, uh, yeah, so, of course. I still got pictures. <laughs> okay, okay. So we take we, t- we take a trip to New York, you know, and, and we want to go, you know, we're going to all the spots. And we want to go to, you know, Little Italy, Little Italy uh, Chinatown, Chinatown, and Canal Street. And Canal Street, right? Yeah, so yeah. We're, we're loving it because... Canal Street kind of reminds me of uh, of uh, what we call over here. It's called the Alley in L.A. Because they sell all the bootleg stuff, right? All the bootleg, all the little knickknacks and stuff. If you're, I'm sorry, I got my throat dry today. If 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 you if you've been to uh, uh, L.A., you know that spot. So we go to Canal Street, and I see Jesus Saves tag, right? And I'm like, oh, he's up right there. A little tag. So I go over there and I get my, my savior sticker out and I slap it on the thing. I take a picture. I start walking down the street and you're talking to another writer. I think you guys were exchanging some art there. And uh, I'm like, and you looked at me you're like, what the heck? And it was like, a, I mean, New York is a big place. You know what I mean? And, and, and you're from Brooklyn. So we were, you know, we're on the, we're in Manhattan and we run into each other. I mean, the odds of that was, was crazy to me. Right. Wow. Wow. Man. Right. Perfect time and perfect place. And uh, <coughs> yeah. Wild, huh? So we, we, we run into each other. I mean, I mean, it was God, you know, put us together. We took some pictures. <laughs> it, was, it was definitely a, a, a small world there. But let's get let's get started from 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 the beginning. You're from Brooklyn. Um, You're, you're not a. A young guy, but you grew up in. A, you're not one of the older guys. You're kind of like in the in the in the middle realm, like to more closer to the to the to the beginning than the than the than the newer guys, I guess you can say. But I'm forty. I'm forty seven. Okay, <laughs> okay, we're the same age. So so yeah. so I mean, there's there's a couple riders that are older than you, but for the most part, right. forty seven. You. Oh yeah, yeah, way older. Yes. Yeah, yeah. There's there, there's there's for the most part there's um, you you've kind of grew up. In the in the New York area, Brooklyn area, in the graffiti scene. So, how did you grow up, and how did you get started in graffiti? Mm-hmm. I mean, since a kid, I was, you know, always in church. Even though there was times, you know, I backslide a little. But even though going, even though we was going to church, I was still around a neighborhood where it was, especially back in the eighties, where it was nothing but massive graffiti new york city was dirty it was at its dirtiest time during that time you know where i would go with well not now if you go on downstairs to take a train at a platform everything is all clean and bright but back in those days it was it was gritty and dirty and graffiti all over so i grew up on graffiti you know what i'm saying i grew up um Everywhere I went, man, graffiti was massive, and I was always curious about it. And um, so I started paying more attention to it, so I got inspired by graffiti. You know what I'm saying? Then that's when I started, like, noticing somebody writing the same hand style everywhere. And I'm like, oh, snap, I see that everywhere I go, so now I see what this is about. You know, at one time, I thought it was, like, gang-related or, you know, even though that's how it was like back in the... Whew, Probably in the fifties and sixties, yeah. Right. But now it's like an independent graffiti writer just selecting a hand style and just writing that everywhere. It's like wow, like JA one for example. I started seeing JA. That was one of the first tags I started noticing everywhere. I even went upstate New York, you know, at a trip from the church, and I see him up there too. I'm like, wow, but who is this dude? And then. After him, there was more and more and more writers that I started seeing everywhere. So I'm like, okay, now I see what graffiti's about, the, the, and I'm I, loving it. We got like a, a similar story here, 
because I grew up in, you know, you guys have subways. You guys have, uh, you, yeah. would, you would see people up on the subways, right? I grew up in L.A., and you start seeing guys up on, on the buses. And we we had the buses, right? And uh, right. so I, I liked graffiti, you know, I, I, but I was a tr- I was like you. I grew up in church. And my dad, the funny thing is my dad was was in a gang, but his 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 moniker that he wrote was uh, uh, he would write it everywhere. And, and, and they even have like they, he even had like saved like uh, if you find this guy, you know, from his high school, if you find this guy, we'll pay a five dollar reward. For, for catching this guy, so my dad was oh, my, wow. my dad was like this guy that would write his name everywhere, concrete and wet, wet oh, wow. concrete everywhere, right? Wow. Spray paint was in the army. He yeah. he went to Germany. He write his gang and his and his and his name, right? Oh, so wow. I was a church kid though, but I was I, I graffiti. I loved it. I love graffiti. I love you know the 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 old school movies, B Street and all that stuff. And so I had friends that were 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 writers. So I remember one time, you know, and this is why I never became a real writer. I write my I write my name, Dave, on a mailbox. Okay, Mean Streak, right down the street from my house. Guess who sees my name on the box? My pops, <laughs> and he comes wow. home and he goes, "Hey, did you write your name on the mailbox over there?" And it was just my, you know, easy hand style, and I said. What did it say? And he goes, it looked like it said Dave. And like, oh no, there's another writer. His his name is Dave Val, and he ha- it, it's it's an L at the end. And I, I lied, of course, but I, I couldn't outsmart my dad. He was a street dude, so I never really got fully into graffiti. But I always loved graffiti. <laughs> oh, man, that's what's up, no, of course, man. But you got into it, and you and you picked what you were, you wrote Spain one right in the beginning. I used to write Spain, but just in the neighborhood, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, I used to just catch tags around the area, around the block. You know? I ain't do much with that. But I still, um, to this day, you know, people still call me Spain. Um, and then I'm doing the gospel hip-hop thing. So I'm using that as a, as my gospel rap name, MC Spain. So was there, and, was there a battle between being saved and, and, and kind of... Breaking the law, right? I mean, I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I did it because you know I was young and and you know I mean yeah I was raised in church but like church was an enemy. It was just because my mother used to make me go ah. and and even though yeah I used to clap and sing but I was more involved. My mind was already in just you know in the, the worldly things. You know what I'm saying? Like the rap music, like third bass and all that, and sure. you know public enemy, and then you know. But then, but it came into it came to a point where, you know what I'm saying? Like later down the line, it's like, man, you know, I, I you know, this guy, you know, there was certain preachings that really touched my heart, man, where God really spoke to me, and I said to myself, man, you know what, man, I started crying. I said, Lord, forgive me, and I just started, you know, that's when I started, you know, what I'm saying reconciling myself with the Lord and taking Him seriously. So then that's when from Spain, then I went to, you know, Jesus Saves. But Spain, I got that tag because I used to go to school. And, I used to, and since I used, you know, I was also speaking Spanish. But because I'm real, everybody thought I was from Spain. But I say, I'm not from Spain. I'm, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm Caribbean, you know. I'm, you know, my parents, Dominicans. And you know what I'm saying? So it's right. like, oh, man. So everybody started. So that's how I got the name. You know what I'm saying? So I, I kept it. You know, so and how long did you write Spain one? Not long. I would write it here and there. You know, just like let's say I would walk around with my boys. You know, what I'm saying um, I would just, I don't know. I just wanted to go, you know, tagging, but I wasn't big like that. We used to just walk around the neighborhood and just write my name just for the fun of it. But I didn't took it like too, too to the heart. Right to actually right. go all city or to do tunnels or to, you know go out of state, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm. You so know, so that was the beginning city. name, right? I mean, a lot of a, a lot of writers, you know, they say they they make fun of 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 toys, right? They call them toys, right? Oh, he was a toy, but yeah. every every great writer starts off as a as a toy. They just they they're, they're trying to get up. They're trying to earn their That's respect and is. make their That's name, right? Starts. So you you write your name. You're hanging out with your boys. 
at what point do you change the name and in, 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 in or change your writer name, I guess, or your tagging to Jesus Saves? Right. At, at what point? Yeah, yeah, like in the mid nineties. Okay. You know I, mean? I, I guess it was time for me to, um, you know, to just represent God because He's been merciful and He's uh, He has protected me. You know what I mean? And um, you know, I got into an incident where, you know, like the weed I was smoking was, you know, had me like going to the hospital and you know so it's like god delivered me from all that and it's like uh you know i was looking for for pleasure and for trying to be down and be cool but at the end of the day it's it's bro it's like my life is on a thin line man i thought about my soul you know what i'm saying um god forbid something happens you know i i you know, I get hit by a car or I don't know. So so you still had a sense of God in your life throughout even your, your rebellious years, right? Or, or the way you turned away, but still there's some sort of sense of pulling you back in a little bit every time. Yeah, of course, of course. Because, you know, being raised in church, somebody could always feel like they're distant or maybe seem like they're distant. But once the word of God, you hear the word of God continuously, it's like planting seeds. You know what I'm saying? And that's how the Holy Spirit works. You know, you could plant seed telling somebody Jesus loves you or, you know, hearing word of God. And next thing you know, seed starts to grow to a point where you want to reach out for God. Your soul and your spirit starts crying out for God. You know what I'm saying? So it came to a point where I I, I was in need of God and I just wanted to go very hardcore with, with Jesus and you know, not only through graffiti, but even through street ministry. The rap music came later on. I started doing that a little later down the line. But, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, I just want to be more in tune, you know, with the gospel and, right. and just doing what God wants me to do. Right. And so when you started writing Jesus Saves, what what was the story behind that? Like, you just, you know, how did you come up with that? Mm, you know, because I... I it's like graffiti was still in me, <laughs> you yeah. know. So it's like, it's like what's the, what's, the, what's the easiest way I can tell people about Jesus and outreach at the same time? Let me write, <laughs> let me write what I everything in just two words: Jesus yeah, saves yeah, yeah, everywhere yeah. all over the city. And I, I, I've done my, you know, I've done my outreaching. I've done, you know, I've done spoke to open the door for people to I could speak to and whatever. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, graffiti was still in me. You know what I'm saying? Um, it, it's, but it's like, I thought to myself, man, maybe if I start writing something, you know, that has to do with Christ, with God, or something positive, a Bible verse or something, maybe this is my way of getting up and also spreading the word because I want to be used. And even though, of course, you know, it's kind of like breaking the law, but at the same time, it's, it's I'm, I was more concerned about the souls out there, you know what I'm saying? So what I did was that I started selecting names like Jesus lives, Jesus heals, Jesus um, helps, Jesus loves, Jesus saves. And, you know, so I was just, That's I said, dope. wait a minute, you know what? Jesus saves because it, it, it comes down to salvation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Not religion, not church, not right. being a good boy and... And not having a big Bible, and but it, it's all about just the salvation of Christ, man. Having a relationship with the Lord, and that's what I'm trying to. I felt like this was the best um, message to put out there in the hoods, in the ghetto, and having a lot of people see that, right? And be like, "Wow, you know, what I'm saying like God is speaking to me, yeah." Through you know what I was writing, and I had people telling me that too. So I'm like, "Oh wow, Amen." Praise God. But I was hoping that somebody could tell me like, yo, bro, I gave my life to the Lord, Jesus Christ, because sure. of your man. But, you know, I never I, well, I never heard that. But, you know, at least, you know, knowing that that they were able to tell me like, bro, I had a bad day. And every time I saw your tag, it made me smile. I feel touched. It's it's a blessing because this is the main reason why I did it. You know right. what I mean? Right. I, I always say that, you know, there's a. Uh... I think when 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 I was doing Save Your Brand and putting it up and doing some wheat paste and, and stickers and stuff, and uh, that's my that was my thing. I had a lot of people say, "Well, that's 
you know, that's not Jesus. You know, that's that's not that's not that's not how he looks. And and, and, mm-hmm. and it always opened up a door because then I would tell people like, I know that's not Jesus. You know what I mean? When I put that sticker up, when I put that wheat paste up, I know it's not Jesus. It's just a representation. It's just a reminder, right? It's just a reminder. And then I would and then with the savior underneath, it was always something like people would be like, Man, dude, that I see your sticker on the on this car, I seen it on this this bus or I seen it on this wall and, and, and I seen it over here. It's everywhere. Like, man, bro, everywhere I go. So I think it was just like 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 what you're saying. It was kinda like a reminder for people to like, hey, this is this is, you know, this is Jesus, right. man. This is who he is, you know. And um but yeah, I, I get what you're saying. You kind of uh is it breaking the law? I, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, I tell people that all the time. I'm not going to say nothing. I'm not going to say for you to go out and do it, you know, right? Because I'm not going to encourage it to do it because there is a a, a price to pay for that. Um, but I'm just saying, you know, I, I believe that, that I'm doing the right thing. And speaking of price to pay, you've paid a price for writing this name a few times, right? Yeah, I would say a lot of time. <laughs> I um, the first like three or five times I've been locked up for graffiti in the beginning, they would let me go because you know back in the nineties, you know it wasn't like they would fight spray paint and be like, "Oh, come on, man, get out of here!" You know what I mean? Like, yeah, they will give you a ticket. They would look for guns and drugs, but now after like with the nine eleven stuff, they started you know like. After the World Trade situation, you know, that's when everything changed. And that's when they started even cracking down on graffiti and making it difficult. And uh, and from there on, I started, you know, doing time. Like, now all of a sudden, they want to give me, before they used to let me go, now all of a sudden, they want to give me, like, seven days. And from seven days, when I got caught again, it would be two weeks. And from two weeks, I get caught again. Maybe another three, maybe three weeks, and then I get caught again. You know, just the more I get caught, the more, the more time they will give me. Like they will look at, like right now, I got at least a total of um, since then to now, I probably got a total of like seventeen or eighteen arrests for graffiti. And right now, if I get caught, they will look at the amount and they will hit me. But I never did no more than like. Well, wait a minute. Well, in New York, I I never did no more than 30 days in Rikers, but I got back like two years ago in Long Island in Glen Cove doing a nice piece out of, of course, an abandoned factory, but according to the police out there, the sheriffs, you know what I'm saying? They're telling me that it's a part of the, it's a part of the county. And um, so I end up doing, and mind you, that's Long Island. Long Island is part of New York, but it's very strict and it's different. From like Brooklyn, Manhattan, you know, right. it's more like there's no cops, it's sheriffs. So they, they the minute around. they saw that arrest, it's like wow. So I end up doing um, they gave me five months out of five. I did three and a half. Yeah, I remember when you were MIA for a little while. And then, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I was yeah. like, I was like, where is this dude? At? I think I even texted you. <laughs> I even texted you. I was like, you cool? And I was like, maybe he changed his number. And then I thought. He got busted. So he, he got, yeah, yeah, he got yeah, busted. Yeah. I end up. That's the most I ever did was three three months and a half. But when they hit me with that, I said, you know what? I'm not gonna cry about it. You know, I did the crime. Now I'm ready to f- do the time. And mind you, it's my first time being in Nassau, Nassau County, you know, prison in Long Island. You know, my yari is a lot of, um, you know, like. Mexicans, Guatemalans, and Salvadoranian gangs, the MS-13 and all that, but I was going there with a prepared heart to be used by the Lord, and um, I'm glad that I was able to fellowship with a lot of believers there, and we started praying for people. It was it was beautiful, and it came to a point where I said, Lord, I'm, I'm thanking you for putting me here. Now I want you to use me for your honor, your glory. Holy Spirit, use me to speak, to minister to these inmates. And bro, man, I mean... Having my own cell, my own little cell, my bed and my little toilet and having a Bible in my hand was the best thing ever because I every day I was making sure I could read as much as I could from Genesis. And before I was out, I managed to read the whole Bible. Wow. 
and I guess that the Lord had me there because when I was out, it was hard for me to, <laughs> you know, make time to read the word. But I, now I got to make sure that, you know, I'm on top of that too. Like make sure I read the word, you know, Yeah. maybe not as much as I did in there, but you know, it's always good to be in tune and to pray. And that's, you know, which is the, to me, the two most important thing in our walk. Yeah. You made the best of your, of your time. I mean, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Of course. I'm not going to just sit there or sleep. I, I need to do something. You know what I mean? Like right. I need to read the word, take notes. Um, when I'm out in the public, you know, cause they give us three hours to watch TV. We all read the word and they, yo, there would be, there was people that was being touched and nice. I would ask them, you know, like, you know, a lot of brothers out there too, you know, African American dudes, you know, that'd be like, yo, can you pray for me? And I would be like, yo, my brother, I'm gonna pray for you right now. And then I would just pray for them and they would be touched. Yeah. And God would just give me where to tell them how beautiful, how important they are, how valuable they are. And you know that, bro, that everything that was said and done in their past is a part of the enemy's plan. And they were like, wow, you know what I'm saying? So they were like, man, I really. I said, yo, acknowledge Jesus, man. Accept the Lord Same. as your Lord and Savior. You know what I'm saying? So it was, it was, it was, you know, like a process. You know what I mean? Right, right. Was, That's dope, you know, That man. I was going through. That's dope. Now, Jesus Saves is literally all city. And what all city, I mean, I mean, what all city means is that you're, you're up. I mean, for here, it would be up all throughout LA. For you guys, it's up <laughs> through five boroughs, right? Yeah, five boroughs. I mean, you're because right. New York and I'm I'm noticing that New York and LA is similar. They're the same in a lot of from ways. What I, from what I heard, yeah, in, yeah. A, in a in a in a lot of ways, um, yeah. I mean, they had it has its LA has its sections. You got you got the downtown area. You know, you got you know the South Bay area. You know, you you some guys. You know, they you know they'll go a little bit more east. You got the southeast area, people. In the valley, you know, and it, it's, it's, I think what it is, it's a little bit more spread out. You know what I mean? That's, and then with traffic, you guys have the subway, so you can go from once, one, you know, Brooklyn, you know, up to Harlem, right, no, right, easy, right, you know? Right, right. So it's, it's different, but um, I think it's, we're more spread out. You guys are more compact, and, and, but, but you still have the different areas, you know, and it's kind of that, in that part, sense, I would say, yeah, it's kind of the same, but going back to all city means, you're riding Jesus Saves pretty much everywhere you you go in in every borough, right? Nah, there was a time I was really <laughs> in every borough. Right now, I'm not doing much. You know what I mean? I'm just like active, just putting up stickers here and there. You know, just maybe catching a couple of market tags. I'm not really doing all that spray painting, right? You know, um, like I used to, like. I mean, 2005, bro, man, I think that's the year that I had the most ups. They couldn't even tell what borough I was from. <laughs> that's how much ups I had, you know. They couldn't tell. I was from Queens, Bronx, Brooklyn, Manhattan. They were like, man, what borough is this guy from? Because in every borough, in every neighborhood, he's, you know. But now it's like just keeping myself low because I'm trying to, like, fade out of. I mean, of course, I'm still going to travel. I'm still going to peace. I'm going to paint. You know, legit wise and permission wise, but I'm trying to like fade out of the, sure. you know, tag in because, um, you know, it's something that I'm taking to God. But like I said, I'm just doing the stick, you know, laying low because you know I think I, mean? I think like, a lot of the writers as they get older, right? I mean, it, it just makes sense. I mean, you 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 have a lot more to lose as you get older. You know, oh, yeah, younger yeah. guys will will take the chances, will climb the buildings, will ride everywhere, <laughs> yeah, 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 do all that yeah. stuff. As you get older, you see like a lot of the older riders, they're just like, mm -hmm. can we, is this a legal wall? Can we get permission? You know, and, and right, some right. guys knock that, you know, they, they, they think like, but you can't be like 50 years old and be, you know, like you were when you were 25. Right, you know? like, exactly, it, it, exactly. It doesn't make sense. And that's what everything, man, you start to fade out a little bit. You'll always be yeah. Spain one, Jesus saves, you know, I mean, this is, it's just, the, that's just who you are. But I think a lot of people expect you to continue to be that way and, and it doesn't work that way you know you got yeah, man. you know you, you like i don't see myself catching as much ups spray painting like i used to you know yeah back in 2003 2005 you know i mean i started in the mid 90s but i was in i was a beginner 
Right. But by 2000s is when I really like early 2000s is when I really started spreading. And I can't see myself going back to that again, because now it's like the streets is crazy. There's a lot of stuff happening. You know, we in a different time right now. We ain't back in the days no more. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, times changed. So I mean, that's I with everything. There's there's more of a risk now. There's more of a, a, yeah. a, a bigger price to pay for, for, for certain things. But I, I trip on your tags and, and I love when you post um, your tag when it was in a video or a video game or you have a, a magazine. You've been in so many things. And every time you post one, like I, I know you have a lot of them. But sometimes you'll post something and I'll be like, I never seen that. You know, like oh, in a okay. Busta Rhyme video or whatever, you know, you have something going right, on. Right, and it's right, like, right, right. And, and, and to me, it like legitimizes like that tag. Like this is this is enshrined in a lot of places. I mean, that's huge for a writer, right? To to, to have the tag enshrined in a video right. or a magazine right. or something like right? Or, or a TV show, whatever it may be. Like you you always post that stuff. I mean, that's huge for, for, for a writer to be enshrined in, in those things, right? Yeah, I mean, for all that, I was like, oh, wow, you know, this writer is, uh, wow, he's big because, you know, like, for example, like Kobe, he's, oh, he comes out in books and this and that. And I'm like, oh, wow, so, yo, I, you know, any writer that, you know what I'm saying, like comes out in books and magazines, you know, as a beginner, you're going to be like, oh, wow, man, this guy, yo, I read about his article, like he's big in the scene. But now that I, that, now to see myself in that level, it's like, I'm not looking at it like it's something that's big. You know what I'm saying? It's like, all right, I, it just happened that, you know, I got interviewed and, I, you know, I just came out in a book on a magazine. But at the end of the day, now that I think about it, it's like, you know, it's like it's. I don't see myself now as big as I used to see others. Uh. When I would read about others, it's like I would look at them like, wow. But now when I read about myself, I mean, I got a couple of books and magazines that I'm, I'm featured in and graph DVDs that I'm featured right. in. And when I see it and I read about myself, it's like, oh, OK, cool. Like, you know, when it's me, it's like I don't even feel like I'm somebody like like a big writer or anything. It's just I just felt like it just happened. It was something that, you know, what I'm saying that God, you know, allowed and opened up door for him. You know what I'm saying? And um and I'm this is why at all time I gotta give him the glory, man, and the praise, man, because I, I think I, it was different for you because you were um it wasn't it was it was a tag, but but most writers are you know, you, you blade or 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 are seen or these guys yeah. it's it's them, right? Yours is a tag that, that, that has a message and it's really not you, it's reflection you know, a reflection of Christ. Right. 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 So, right. so a little bit different. It's kind of hard balance. Like I wrote that it, I'm in the magazine, but it really, the message is, is, is not about me. It's about Jesus. Right. So that, that's what, right, right. That's what made your tag a little bit different. Amen. Amen. Yes. And, and you know, I've been like that, of course now, and but I ain't got a lot of you, brother. There was a time that, you know what I'm saying? Like, 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 it, it kind of like a little got to me, like when I first came out on the magazine, when I first came out right. on the graph DVD, I'm like, oh, wow, man, yo, now watch, man. I'm going to, bro, right now I feel like catching even more ups, <laughs> you know, like it hyped me up. Right. And it's like, wow, you know, like, yo, I came out on a book, yo, I came out on this graph DVD, you know, it, but then, I, but then, yo, it came to a point where I said, oh my goodness, whoa, whoa. I said, Lord, Lord, yeah. forgive me because you know, sometimes pride sneaks in, you know what I'm saying? Like, of oh, course. you know, of and we got to be careful with that. So yeah. it's like I had to just, you know, humble myself, you know, especially in God's presence and ask the Lord to forgive me. And I say, Lord, forgive me. This is your message. It's not mine. And if you got to take this away from me, then, you know, right. just remove this cup because I don't want that, you know what I'm saying, to, um, to be a block. A blockage with my relationship with God, you know what I'm saying? Because sometimes anything can can puff you up. I don't know how up. to say it. Yeah, anything, yeah, anything can yeah. puff you up. It can. It, it, you, you're unique because you're you're a writer. You're writing this everywhere. You you're in videos in the source, all these different magazines, and very easy. But even for your average worship leader, right? 
if somebody can go up to him and say, hey, man, that was great. You have a great voice. And you get a little big at it, right? <laughs> I, I always right. laugh because I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I learned early on, and, and, and I do this, and I, I shared this with my wife the other day because mm-hmm. – uh, no, with my buddy the other day, is is that I – I did a little thing at church. They asked me to to, to, to say it's like it's called like a sh- sh- uh, short uh, sermon short, and basically you go up there and you share something, and it's like three four minutes. Get I got right. up there, I shared a little something, and you know the, the main pastor comes up to me after he's like, "Dave, that was great, man. That was great." And I said, "Praise the Lord, praise the Lord," and I don't just say praise the Lord. At of course I give God the glory. It's all Him. But I I do say praise the Lord because it's a reminder to me that it's not me. So when somebody tries to give me some sort of credit, even with the podcast, man, you know, like, hey, man, that podcast ministered. Praise God, man. Thank you for listening. I appreciate that. Great. Because and it, and it's a remind. I say it because I want to remind myself, like, right. it's not about me. It's it, 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 it's it's about Him. And so right, right. when I say that, I'm like. Praise God. And, I, and I'm sitting in my head like, praise God. And they're like, that was, I like the way. And they'll go, praise God. And I'll probably say praise God like three, four times because I'm like, no, stop. Don't get puffed up. It wasn't about you. Thank you. Right. Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know what right. I mean? Right, exactly. But it's very yep. easy to get. I mean, we're human. We, you know, it's somebody yeah, it pats us on yeah. the back. We got to we gotta bring it down. We got to know who 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 gave us that talent, Who who's the creator, who who blessed us, who That's made right. the way. That's right. right? That's right. Mm-hmm. Because remember, our gift comes from him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we got to be careful that we don't idolize those gifts. Right. You know, sometimes even a calling could be could be an idol. You know, like I'm an evangelist or I'm a missionary. I'm a singer. We got to be careful that we don't idolize that. Right. You know, there was a time in Genesis 22 where um, God asked, um, told um, Abraham, you love your son more than anything. Give me your son. Put him on the altar. And yeah. there's times that. We could find ourselves putting an Isaac on the altar. Right. You know, what's my Isaac? What's your Isaac? My Isaac could be graffiti. So there's times if it is, I got to put it on the altar. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we got to just, yeah, we just got to be, you know what I'm saying? Make sure we don't analyze anything because anything could be an idol. You know what I'm saying? Even right. in the gospel, even in church, being a pastor can become like, oh, I'm a pastor or, or, or I'm an evangelist. I'm a, I'm a worshiper. Right. You know, and, and, I'm a known worship. You know, we got to be careful, brother, because that comes from God, man. And the word of God says that, um, you know, the pride, you know, will fall. And those who humbles is, you know, who God will lift up. You know right. what I'm saying? But not humbling because I want to be lift up or humbling because God gets the credit and he gets the praise. Yeah. For for everything, man. It, it's, it's, uh, I was talking to a guy and we were talking about, you know, people use the term self-made all the time. I'm self-made. I'm self-made. And I and I and I and I I said, man, this guy needs to stop saying that. Nobody <laughs> is self-made. You know, yeah. you gotta do the work, right? You gotta do the work. I, I agree with that. But we all had some help along the way, and the Lord has helped us all along the way. Somebody somebody witnessed to you, somebody witnessed to me, somebody prayed for me, somebody lifted me up, somebody lifted you up. Um Somebody encouraged us, right? Somebody encouraged us, blessed us. And so when people start saying they're self-made, I, I always say, wait a minute. Just just think about what you're saying. With that saying, it's a little boastful. It's a little prideful. Bring it back a little. There's no way the podcast, there's no way, you know, the art. I, I have friends that have blessed me. You've been a blessing um, and have helped me along the way. They, 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 Likewise, they You man. know, and, you. and it just... We've all gotten some help. There's nobody that's really self-made, you know? Right, right. And we got to be careful with that because, um, you know, God helps us, but we also got to be surround ourselves with fired up brothers and sisters. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's going to lift us in this walk, you know? That's it. But self-made can also mean can mean anything, you know what I'm saying? Like self-made could be just giving a man giving himself credit or self-made could be yeah. like nature like my mom and my father created me you know and right. you know self-made could mean anything that's that has nothing to do with god being involved can be mean, dangerous. So. We, we we talked a little bit about talent do you consider your graffiti as one of your talents 
I um I pieced. I'm not not to brag. I kind of like the color schemes, but um, it, you know, it's a whether it comes out nice or not, it's still a talent because it's something that God has given every per. You know, God gives a gift to every person. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I would say that it's you know it's 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 a talent. It's a skill that comes from God. You know what I'm saying? Because my best pieces, man, it's not that it's me. I mean, it's coming out of me, but it's, you know, it's God who gives me ideas. Right. You know what I'm saying? My ideas and everything I do comes from him. You know I, think, I, mean? I think that's big because uh, he, he puts the ideas in our heads. He, he gave us the skills. Not everybody can, can do graffiti. Not everybody can be a writer. Not everybody can express in those manners. And I, and I asked that question because we've all been given some talents. And, and, and some people use them to the fullest and, and, and glorify God. And some people use them less and, and or glorify, you know, the devil or, or themselves, you know. Nah. So I always try to tell people, use your talents, whatever you got. I, I, I love talking. I love being on the mic, man. I mean, I, that's what I've always liked to do. And, 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 and I say, man, I'm, I'm going to use this, you know. So I, that's why I ask that because I think people sometimes they think their talent has to be – you know, on stage or they think their talent has to be in the limelight or if they don't achieve what somebody else achieved or they're not hitting numbers or, you know, being this sensation on Instagram. I I think people think like they got to be that to be of value, but God has given them, given us all talents. It it just might be in a different format. And, and, And sometimes we skip over those talents just to be like somebody else that, and we don't have that same talent or we don't, that's not what God's called us to do. Right. Right. Well, um, I know that individually, everybody individually, it's part of God's plan and purpose and whatever your calling is, it's going to be fulfilled. You know, it got to be fulfilled. Um, you just got to be obedient to the Holy spirit and, and do what God puts in your heart rather if it's graffiti rather if it's ministering rather if it's uh singing you know anything evangelizing you know preaching or pastoring you know anything we do man that that we're very skilled for it's a calling that god has given us as long as we're using it for the right reason not for the wrong right you know what i mean right like right now not to brag man i think the my gospel rap my my lyrics is you know it's there but i gotta work on my deliverance and my you know and my flow like it's you know people tell me like yeah you know your stuff is hot man but your deliverance you know you gotta sometimes i'm a little offbeat or whatever but oh you know at the end of the day it's just that i just want my lyrics to be heard so like that people could feel touched my lyrics is basically about the things that people goes through what i went through you know, speaking right. what God can do for you, where God could take you out from. So I make sure that every track I do it has a different topic and a different, um, you know what I mean? Like it's almost like preaching. You know, you preach, a, you you know, you preach a topic. Now you gotta next week you gotta preach the next topic. Right, right. I mean, I mean a, a different topic. Now I'm preaching the same thing you preached last week. <laughs> nah, I got you. You know, so I was gonna pre- get to that. Yeah, you, yeah. you started you started rapping and I started seeing you put up stuff and I was like, this dude's pretty bold to say, yeah, I, I want to rap now. And you you make your videos, you put it out there, you rap. I mean, how did that come about? Well, I was never, I always wanted to rap, you know, and I, I grew I mean, up in hip hop. Because look, at, you're, you you grew up in, in in New York, grew up in Brooklyn. It's it's around the culture, right? It's 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 graffiti, yeah. it's b-boying, it's it's uh uh uh. Uh, break dancing, uh, emceeing, and DJing, right? Yes, yeah, four element. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, let me see if I can remember. Um, no, I was I was just saying that um, that you know the the, the break dancing, you know, like it is is a part of the hip hop. Five elements, it's, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The five elements or whatever it is, preaching, or whatever. We always gotta make sure that at the end of the day, it's for the souls. We can't think about ourselves, you know what I'm saying? We can't think about receiving God's blessings and the salvation. We can't be greedy with that. We got to also share it with others. So like that, you know what I'm saying? We got to have compassion and and love for other people and for the souls out there. You know, like 
not me just, you know what I'm saying, being greedy. And, and I want to be able to testify what God did so people could be touched. So it could be like, yo, I want to give my life to the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and like that, the Holy Spirit could start, you know, touching their, transforming them and being used. And, and, and they also receive blessings. And through them, you know, it's, it's like a pyramid. You know, families are going to start coming to Christ and it's just going to grow. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it comes down to. I, I like what I like what. Uh, what, you know, you become one to win one. Right. And, and yeah. you're you're in you're in the in the elements, man, and graffiti and emceeing and, and, and you're out there. So sometimes I think we get away from uh, uh, trying to connect with people on their level or where they're at. You know what I mean? I mean, Paul said that, right? I become one to win, win right, one. Right. So, so they may be saved. You know, I, I think that uh, sometimes we can get away from that and think like, I'm better than that now. I'm better than graffiti now. I'm better than the streets now. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I don't need none of that stuff no more. And we got to remember where we came from and somebody coming up to us, right? Right, right. Amen. That's right. Well, right now I'm at a point where graffiti's cool. Don't get me wrong. I like it. You know, saying it, it, for God's honor and glory, it, it, you know, it took me far. But it's like I'm at a point where I just want what God wants for me, man. And um, I just want to be led. Right. And maybe, who knows, maybe God is, you know, calling me to do something else. You know what I'm saying? Um, I also gave the rap music thing a try. I'm still at it, too. But it's like sometimes this ain't it. Yeah. It, you know, like Jeremiah of uh, 33, um, 33, um, when God says, um, seek me and, and seek my presence and I will show you things that you don't know. So sometimes God can take it to another level where, where, you know, he just wants to, um, expand his glory by using us. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So yes, you know, don't not to brag. Yeah. I do the street ministry too. Like with tent ministry from Brooklyn. Sometimes we out there, you know, feeding people, um, praying for the souls and, you know, working with the ministry as well. You know what I'm saying? That's a good thing. But, um, and, and it's good to be active, but you may never know what God can do with you, man. Where God, what's the next step God is going to take you to or what doors are going to open for you. Right. You know what so, I mean? so, so what you're saying is Spain one is not done. I mean, what? You, or, or Spain? Uh, I, mean, I, I still. You, you're not I'm done. Be like, like you're still. Like you can sit back on your laurels and say, I, I, "I've done enough." That's what I'm saying. But you're 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 still allowing, like, okay, Lord, whatever you have for me, right? I think that's huge. Yeah, yeah, because it's cool to just you know put his word out there, his name out there, you know, name above all names, Jesus Christ, you know, just, Amen. But you may never know what God is going to do, what, what doors God is going to open for us. You know what I'm saying? Right. You don't know what's going to be the next calling. Right. Who knows? I might be, uh, God might call me to start singing, even though my singing is not that good. Whoa, but... whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe my singing is not that good, but oh. hey. You know. Hold on, man. <laughs> I think we're taking it too far, bro. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you, man. Hey, man, no, I mean, that, singing it was just an example. No, no, I get it. I get it. It could be, it could be singing it. Who knows? He might call me the pastor. I don't know. That's, that's what I'm thing. saying. I, I think that's great because you can get really uh, 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 comfortable. That's the right word. You can get really comfortable and say, well, I did the graffiti thing. I fed the homeless. I did the hip hop thing, you know, and I, I just want to chill now. But I, I mean, having that open heart to say, okay, Lord, whatever else you have for me or whatever you call me to do. I'm cool with that. Whatever you want me to do. I think that's right, a, right. I think that's a good place. I think that comes with maturity, with age. Uh um, uh, you know, you you're you just okay with who you are and who you want God to be. I I I say that all the time like, "Okay, Lord, what whatever your will." And, and it, it's a good place to be. It feels good to be able to say that. When you're younger and you say whatever your will, you're like, "Yeah, but I don't really want to do that." You know, when you get a little older, right. you're like, "I just want to be in the will." Yeah, because of so many years already, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, being, I mean, of course, being in church and also, you know, with the graffiti stuff and, you know, like, it's to a point where it's like, okay, you know what I'm saying? Like, my heart is ready. I'm I'm ready for any, you know, calling that God gives me. Or let's say, for example, they call me 
like tent ministry. Yo, we're going to be doing some ministry. Come through. I come through and only God knows what's going to happen. You right. Know what I mean? Like, right. You know, so it's as long it, as he doesn't call you to the prison expected. ministry again. You know what I mean? You should, you should be. <laughs> well, let's see. I mean, <laughs> you might get busted again. I'll be like, Hey, Ruben, where you at, bro? You're like, I, I'm busted. I'm, not, I'm in the prison yeah, ministry I, now. You know, yeah, yeah, I might. I, you know, I'm not saying that I will, but sometimes it happens. Sometimes I get that itch and that urge to want to go. And as a matter of fact, I think I busted. When was it like about like almost a, about a year ago? Putting up a sticker, but of course because of the pandemic, it's a misdemeanor. They gave me DAT <laughs> ticket and come back to court. The lawyer was like, "Oh man, for this." The judge saw me like. All right, man. Just stay out of trouble for like six months. So right now, because of the pandemic, it's like I'm over here saying, "Oh man," but I got a lot of rest for graffiti. I'm a repeat offender. I might do, t-. but now it's like, but it, but it's not for me to also be like, "Oh wow," right? That's right. We in the pandemic time, so let me OD. Let me go out there and start. I you got know, you. you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. to a point where I'm like, you know what, man? Yeah. Let me. Let, I just want to fall back, man, and see and see what God, what else God wants. Right. You know what I'm um, let me ask you this. So if a young writer comes up to you, a church kid, <laughs> and says, Ruben, Spain, Jesus saves. Hey, man, uh, I have an idea. I, I, I want to be a writer. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I love Jesus saves. And I, I, I followed pray, you know, and, you know, I want to I want to be like that and, and i want to write this everywhere what, what what do you tell him well i mean i mean he comes up with jesus is king or you know right, he comes right, up with right, his right, with, right. whatever it may be god is good or something you know and he wants right, to write right, that everywhere. Right, right. well i don't whatever i did was a decision i made i think right. that me telling him y'all go and catch ups and catch tags it's like you know, I don't think it's my, uh, you know, as a believer and as somebody who, you know what I'm saying, I, I feel like it's not in my position for me to tell them that you go and, you know, and risk his freedom or God forbid something happens, you know, or, or just start catching tags because I don't know what he's going to do. He could probably write on clean property. You know what I'm saying? That's something I never did. I never wrote on clean property. But the minute I see a lot of graffiti, yeah. But just imagine if this guy was to... Um, being a beginner starts writing on somebody's clean van or clean, you know, then I'm going to feel like it's my fault or God forbid something happens. I'm going to take responsibility for it. And to make it even worse, you know, God is probably going to hold me accountable for that. You know, right. you know what I'm saying? So I don't think I want to, I would tell him like, yeah, yo, go and catch some ups and this and that. The best I could tell him is like, you're just, you know, as of now, the best I could tell you is just get a blackbird, get a canvas, just start doing your thing or start doing permission walls, you know, ask around if you've got the urge to paint. Because I myself know permission spot, I could probably take, you know, that brother to, to a spot where he could paint with me. Right. So like that, he could let all that out. But as for me telling him to, yo, go out at night and do this and that, nah, man, I mean, yeah. right now, that's the mentality I had back then. Right. I can't now at this moment afford to tell, especially a kid that's probably like 17 or 20 years old, man. I'm 47, probably, you know, old enough to be his father. Yeah. What kind of advice, you know, what kind of advice would I give him? Yeah. If I was to tell him to, yo, and pl- plus being young, to tell him like, yo, go and catch ups, go and vent, you know. Yeah. Oh, man. What 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 would his parents think about me? <laughs> you right. know what I'm saying? So right. they're probably going to want to kill me. Yeah, there is a there is a big risk with that. You know, what I mean? you know so, so no, not yeah. only just a big risk, but there's a lot of things behind all that. Oh, yeah. yeah. By me telling a young a young writer or a youth to do that, that's. You yeah, know, it's, it's it's it comes so in, in all, it, you know, it comes in all sizes, man. Right. A different size, you right. know, parents getting locked up. Um. God forbid he gets jumped or something happens, you know, because it's dangerous. Being yeah, it's it's risky. It's yeah. risky. Yeah. And that's come on, bro. That's not that's almost like, you know, telling a baby Christian, yo, it's OK to smoke weed. It's OK to, yeah. you know, hang out. It's OK to drink, you know, liquor. And, and you know what I'm saying? It's not it's not 
that's not edifying. It's right. not it's not helping him grow. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I got you, man. I got you. So look at man, we uh we had a good chat a good a good chat there, man. Good uh looks like about an hour there, man. I got one more thing for you, bro. And then I'll let you give some shout outs and, and and let you get the last word here. But we li- we do a little thing on the Street Gospel podcast called the Furious Five. And basically oh, I remember them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> basically it's it's back it's, in my childhood days. <laughs> it's five furious questions that we throw out there and we and, and we ask we ask our guests and, and and you know we we put on put on a little beat, you know, and uh we ask you five furious questions here, man. So are you ready for this? All right, Mr. Uh, Jesus Save Spain One, Ruben Nunez. MC Spain. MC Spade. <laughs> all these monikers and aliases, AKA. And then if you become the worship leader for your church, man, then you're going to have a new AKA. <laughs> Spain, the worship leader. Hey, man. Hey. The, Praise be to God. Who knows? Hey, who knows, man? Whatever he wants, right? Confirmation. Nah. <laughs> Let me stop. All right. Question number one of the Street Gospel Podcast, Furious Five. If you didn't write Jesus Saves, what would you write? Wow. In that um, same realm, what would be a second choice? Um, Jesus Lives. That's good. Or uh, Redeemer. Too long. Redeemer's too long. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jesus Lives. I think that's dope. Would, be, would definitely, Jesus Lives, I think would definitely... Uh, or Jesus heals. I don't know. I mean, I, I think it look. I, I think in the in the in the mind. I think the way it stacks, right? Because that's the way you write it. You write it stacked. Like some people would think that you're gonna write it all the way this way. But yeah, when, sometimes I go across. Sometimes I do it one like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When it look, it looks dope stacked. It's the same amount of letters. All right, cool. Okay. Question number two. Furious five. Who is the greatest New York City graph artist of all time? In your opinion. a tough one <laughs> there's a lot of them um i would say um mirrors from five points you know he's um he's very talented there he's a tremendous artist you know but you have many many it's i mean wow you know you got cope you got zemat you know hope yeah Oh yeah, mm-hmm. you got, got Cope, Cope, you got Zemat. Oh, he, Zemat is he gets a little controversial, Cope, but uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I like I like his. You know what I'm saying? I like it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Germs, especially Germs. That yeah. guy Germs is like wow. Topaz, you know, you got a lot of these good, you know, graffiti artists. That I think are, I think it's hard to pick one, especially in. I mean, in LA, you know, they have their battles too, but in New York, it goes back. I mean, you, we're talking all the way back to the seventies, early seventies. Right. So, right, and then all right. the way up. So there's, there's many eras in, in LA. There's eras too, but it, it's not that long of a span. You're talking maybe mid eighties to now, you know, you guys right, go, have, right. have like 15 years, almost 20 years on, on, on us a little bit, but that's dope. Right. All right. Question number three on the furious five, your biggest regret in life. That's a tough one. <laughs> um, my biggest regret, I guess, would be um, probably backsliding. As a youth, you know, as a youth fan, and you know, being able to um, have a taste of the world out there that kind of like. You know, messed me up. You know what I mean? And, and, you know, that's a regret that I have that I, you know, being raised in church, um, I backslided and, um, you know, I wish I, I, if I could turn back the hand of time, I wish I can, like, being raised in church as a little kid, um, I wish I can, I would have, oh, I should have just, you know, stuck with the Lord, man, mm. all this time, maybe I, you know, 
But um, yeah, I guess I would say that. That's a that's an honest answer, man. I appreciate that one, man, for sure. Yeah, thank you. All right, question number four. This is gonna be another hard one for you, man. Favorite spot to eat in New York? Mm, I like going to Kellogg's. It's located yeah. in Williamsburg. Kellogg's. Okay, what do they have? They got the Reuben sandwich. Ooh. They got the Philly cheesesteaks. I'm saying they got the the A with with, with bacon. You know, I'm gonna have, I'm, I'm gonna have to try it. I, I, I I'm a big cats guy. You know what I mean? I, oh yeah, Katz is in the LES. Yeah, ooh, yeah, right there. Yeah, man, yeah. Katz is good. Man, I mean, I mean, they're a little pricey though, but they good. Little pricey. They are a little pricey. <laughs> man. You, you spend a Philly cheese thing like twenty dollars. Yeah, I me and my wife go, and then you buy, and then you get fries and a drink, man. <laughs> I remember the first time I was like, let me get a drink. It was like three, three, three dollars, and and it was a can. I was like, wait, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I was yo. like. Come on, man! I think the last time we went, it was like I think we split the sandwich, bought two separate fries, yeah. and then we bought drinks. It was saved a little bit of money, but I think it was a cool right, right. fifty bucks or something like that. I was like, "Yo, oh, wow. yeah, man! You get a certain, you know what I'm saying? Like you get a certain." Uh, it's good. I mean, you go there for the atmosphere, but yeah, you can't eat there all the time. I mean, but it, it, it is a it is a good spot. But I'll have to try Kellogg's, man, for sure. Yeah, Kellogg's, most stuff, man. Last question on the Furious Five, man. Um. Who's been your biggest influence? Graffiti wise? Anything or? wise. On your life. Um, my biggest influence, um, I would say. Well, of course, Jesus Christ first is my biggest influence, and, and but you know, along with 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 our Savior, um, I would say my mom's, my yeah. mother, because my mother raised us right, and she's been an example, and um, she's been um, she's been there for me. You know what I'm saying? Even though I don't live with her like that, but she's always. Um, we we still you know visit each other. We spend time with each other, and she's always calling, making sure I'm okay. And um, so, I, you know, I even though of course when I was a kid, she has given me my beatings and everything. But at the end of the day, she disciplined me to be um, the man that I am today. So she to me is my biggest influence. Nice because um, you know what I'm saying. She showed me how to you know how to respect. And think about others as much as I think about myself. That's dope. Ain't nothing like a praying mom, man. Yeah, amen. <laughs> <laughs> amen. That's right. Oh yeah, my mother's a prayer warrior. Right. That's right. Hey, man. I appreciate you coming on, brother. I know we had a Thank little you, some little brother. hiccups there, but uh, it turned out great, and man. Hey man, praise be to God, man. Look out, man. And uh, you thank you say, as well. You want to say anything, man, before we get out of here? Um. Well, I'm just going to keep it short and simple. I just want to give a shout out to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I want to thank you, Brother Dave. Um, you know that you're also, you know, inspiring with the Savior brand, um, which I'm a fan of. And may God continue to bless all you guys out there in Cali, John 14, 6. You know, believe and right. all, to all my gospel graffiti um, writers and artists out there. And um, it's too much to shout out. But um, I just want to say that God is good, man. And um, let's just continue to build, man. And uh, I mean, thanks, brother. Go with the flow. Appreciate you, man. God, God's flow. Thank you. Hey, I appreciate you, what's, too. What's your Instagram? Oh, my IG is um, Jesus Saves underscore um, NYC and um, M dot C underscore Spain 777. Shh. Got two of them, man. Pretty soon we're gonna get the third one out there with the worship, Spain worship. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, amen, amen, amen. All the right, minute brother. I come out with something, I'm gonna let you know. Okay, okay. Let me know, man. Right. Appreciate All you, right, man. Brother. God bless you, man. I appreciate you too. Bless you, man. Take care. God bless you too. Take care. Yo, that will wrap up this episode of the Street Gospel Podcast. Uh, thank you to my guest, Ruben Nunez, uh, Spain One, Jesus Saves. Check him out on the gram. Go follow him. Uh, we really appreciate everybody out there. We out. Peace.